sometimes I miss visual astronomy. Sometimes on a nice, still, clear night, I really wish I could just go outside with the telescope and look up at the stars whilst my main rig takes photos. Without having a full visual rig and admittedly being somewhat too lazy for that, I decided to ask First Light Optics for some binoculars to review and ultimately settled on the Celestron 15x70s. It's time for a binocular review. Straight out of the box, the Skymaster is actually really impressed. A robust build quality, a nice firm feeling in the hand, and a wonderful rubberized coating across the entire binocular makes this feel like a much more premium product than the price would probably lead you to believe in the first place. Also, the eye distance adjustment is nice and firm with a good tension to it and is fully indexed. So once you've found the correct distance initially, finding it again is really quite easy. I personally found that the focus wheel is well within reach, especially of my middle finger and also of my index finger. Now I also appreciate that I have large hands. So if you have smaller hands than me, you might have to reach over the binocular a little bit more to adjust focus when you're using them. Not necessarily a problem if you're using these for astronomical purposes because you don't usually refocus when visual, using visual astronomy, especially with a pair of binoculars. Once you've reached focus, you've reached focus. If you're using these terrestrially for bird watching, then, you know, I found that the focus wheel is smooth and you can easily track a bird and change focus at the same time. One thing that wasn't immediately obvious to me or occurred to me until I was using it for terrestrial use, any kind of binocularing or looking at space was you can just look at where you want to go and bring your binoculars up to your eyes and you're already there. So I want to look at the moon, there's the moon, and there's the moon, and I'm already looking at it. With the telescope, you'd need to move it about, use a finder scope, rack the focus in and out, and then you'll eventually get there. But with the binocular, it was just bang, and you're there. That was really convenient, and it never initially occurred to me. I really like that feature about using binoculars. Upon closer inspection and scrutiny, the twin 70 mm lenses look well seated. There's no glue holding these in place that I can see. You can actually see the tension ring below the rubber, rubber casing. Also, the rubber case extends over the lens just a little bit and makes a small dew shield. Now, that's a nice touch, but in reality, I'm not expecting that to keep dew off of these lenses. When I was using the binoculars and testing them out, a lot of the time, it actually got down to minus two degrees. And I was using the winged eye cups you see on it here. Now, these are recommended for astronomical use because it blocks out stray light coming into the side of your eyes. That's really good. It really makes it comfortable looking at the night sky and it makes you feel a bit of a badass. But <laughs> the eyepieces actually began to fog up and do up. And I can only suspect that's because the winged eye cups, when it was against your eyes, stopped airflow getting to the lenses. If you use it without the winged eye cups and you hold it just slightly away from your eyes as you would normally use it, they didn't fog up. Again, I can only conclude it's because there was no airflow to demist them and they were then getting foggy because of the lenses are cold but your face is warm. So on cold nights, the winged eye cups seem to have hindered the performance of these binoculars. The objective lenses are covered in Celestron's own XLT multi-coating technology. Now, whatever that means in English, I can't tell you, but multi-coatings is always a good thing. It helps improve clarity and contrast and things like that. And I also noticed good clarity and a nice flat field across the, across the star field when I was using these without any obvious distortions. There are multi-baffles and knife-like baffles going along the inside of the binocular to help improve contrast and remove internal reflections. And I'm not sure about you, but the aesthetics and the appearance of a product really matters to me. And to that end, the Skymasters look, well, I think they look really nice. They're not sleek, but they also don't have this industrial look to them either. It looks like they've actually bothered to do some designing on them. I particularly like the silver accent rings. In use, the binoculars weigh about 1.7 kilograms. That's about 3.7 pounds. Now that's not heavy, but after, after some use, you'll begin to notice the dreaded arm wobble when using binoculars. I like to think myself of at least average strength in such an arbitrary scale as that. And you know, I could look at the moon for a few minutes, maybe five minutes before I began really feeling that lactic acid building up. And I was like, can't hold it, can't hold it. That was also just like at a very minor acute angle like that, but anything higher towards the zenith then that blood is gonna completely drain out of your arms a lot faster 
and you're going to begin wiggling that much quicker as well. To help combat this, you can attach the binoculars to a tripod. It does come with a tripod adapter in the box. And to fit it, you just unscrew the tasteful Celestron logo at the front of the adjustment, screw the tripod adapter into it, and then if you really want to, you can refit the Celestron logo if you so wish to represent. One issue I had, and boy was it a big issue, the tripod adapter actually got stuck into the body of the binoculars and it felt like it cross-threaded. It was so stuck in there. I had to take the binoculars to work and get some big tools onto it and actually pry it with like free off. It's not cross-threaded. The threads aren't damaged, but I don't know what, but it really tightened itself on there. So <laughs> I don't know what they can do about that. But yeah, this review sample I had, they got completely stuck. So beware and just be mindful of that if you go for these binoculars. The field of view afforded to you by the Skymaster 15 by 70s is 4.4 degrees. Put that in perspective, that can fit the entire Andromeda galaxy into the oculars quite comfortably. And also the Orion Nebula was quite nice to behold as well. Even under Bortle 6 skies and a waxing gibbous moon, I could easily make out some core detail and the wings of the Orion Nebula. It was really quite a pretty sight to behold and relatively quite impressive for a set of handheld binoculars. I never would have thought you could use them for astronomical use when I was younger, that was. The moon was also quite a nice sight to behold. Of course, it didn't entirely fill up the oculars. It didn't fill the frame of view, but observing the full disc was nice, crisp and sharp, actually. A lot of contrast from the moon to the background sky. There was a slight bit of chromatic aberration that I found around the moon and also like during terrestrial use, I did notice a bit of chromatic aberration. Nothing terrible, I've seen a lot worse, but I'm just making you aware that it is there. Now, I also found that the chromatic aberration kind of depended on what angle I was exactly looking through the binoculars, which makes a degree of sense if you think about it. But even when I was just flat hold hand, hand holding them against my eyes, there was still a slight bit of chromatic aberration present. But nothing to really detract from the viewing experience. One thing I want to see improved and done differently is the carry case. Now it comes with one and it has belt loops on it so you can attach it to your belt or it has a, like a messenger bag strap. But the downside about them is it only fits the binoculars. Now is that a bad thing? Well, it comes with accessories like the aforementioned tripod adapter and different eye cups accessories and straps and things like that. But there's no pockets on the carry case for them. You just fit the, the binoculars in there. And of course, that means you can just put those things into the main compartment with the binoculars. But <sighs> there's something about doing that that doesn't really sit nicely with me. I would have liked to see just a small front stitched pocket. I don't think it would have been too hard to do where you could put these accessories into. If you're wondering what you can see with the Skymaster 1570s, the theoretical limited magnitude is 11.93, basically magnitude 12. The Flaming Star Nebula falls within that range. I should have been able to see it, but I wasn't able to see the Flaming Star Nebula with these telescope, with these telescope, with these binoculars. Now, whether that's because of the moon washout or the light pollution or whatever like that, I'm not sure, but I wasn't able to see the flaming star but like I said I did kind of see the tadpoles as a faint smudge. Also during my tour of the night sky with the sky masters I was able to find the Perseus double cluster in them, the tadpole nebula also just about showing up as a faint fuzzy and the starfish cluster I saw as well. So really actually quite an enjoyable night with the binoculars. At the time of this review the sky masters weigh in at 189 pounds and I kind of find that quite agreeable. Yes, you could probably pay a little bit more and get a Dobsonian telescope or an actual telescope, but for portability and grab and go, a pair of binoculars is hard to beat. And if you want to think in terms of telescopes, you're getting two 70mm telescopes here with a fixed eyepieces for under £200 in a quick grab and go package. And also for terrestrial viewing, they're weather sealed, they're weatherproof. So that's always a nice handy thing. Actually, it snowed and I took these outside and I was bird watching in the snow and all I had to do was wipe the lenses down when they dried and clean it. Absolutely wonderful. To surmise, I found the sky masks to be really quite good to use. Yes, there's a bit of chromatic aberration when you're looking at the moon, for example, but that's the most extreme case and you can really just kind of look past it. It doesn't detract you from the viewing experience. You don't really see it on stars and you definitely don't see it on DSOs. 
The biggest downside about the binoculars is that they're a bit heavy and after a few minutes you'll begin to notice a bit of arm wobble begin to appear. But again, you can attach them to a tripod for ease of use and comfort. During terrestrial use as well, they're really quite enjoyable to use. Again, the chromatic aberration was there and a lot more obvious during the day purely because everything's brighter. But again, I mainly saw it as magenta hues and you can kind of look past it. And again, when you're doing things like bird watching, I found the focuser to be very smooth and very responsive and was just easy to use. For a pair of binoculars from a reputable optics company, a Celestron, which are weather sealed, durable, and of good spec and quality, despite the niggling bit of chromatic aberration, I find the Skymasters to be well positioned actually. And I'm half tempted to go to Flow to first our optics and keep them for myself. I quite like them, they're nice and handy to have on the shelf. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you enjoyed the video, give that thumbs up. And if you think I could have done better, then you know what to do. And consider subscribing for more reviews such as this. Now, are you planning on getting a pair of binoculars for astronomy use or maybe terrestrial use? Drop me a message in the comments down below. And with that, it's time to say clear skies, everyone. Keep looking up and keep focused, I guess. Enjoy the night sky or the ornithology. I'll see you later.